What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Journeyman. This week, we got ATL, Sade, Juju Gotti of the Dan Lebatar Show. Joining us, we talk Pro Football Hall of Fame weekend, fights, fights, and more fights. And we talk about why Patrick Mahomes just might be the GOAT. We got that and so much more. Let's get to it. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Journeyman Podcast, brought to you by the good folks at the DraftKings Network and Metal Arc Media. As always, I'm your host, seven-year NFL veteran and Hall of Fame, wait for it, attendee, Andrew Hawkins. Not to be confused with the real Hall of Famer. I'm joined today by my boy, my guy, Juju Gotti, who is an N1 mixtape student and WNBA purist. That's how he describes himself. Juju, what's happening, bro? Yes, sir, man. Just feeling so honored to be a part of the illustrious Journey Man podcast, man. I, I salute you, brother. You, you've been a big, big figure. You know what I mean? Out here in this NFL street since the pandemic, you get your memes and your joy. I, bro, I'm a big fan, so I'm honored to be here. Juju, I've, I've met a lot of people in my, my 38 year career of life, and you might be the most grateful person that I've ever met in any walk of life, bro. I just feel like you just consume life. And everything is just always good, bro. Yeah, yeah. I've been, I've been all the way toe up before. You know what I mean? Yeah. I've been homeless before. I've been broke a lot. <laughs> you feel me? Mm-hmm. So having a, a chance to be around people like yourself and just, just professional people as well as people that look like us that actually do something other than sell the most drugs. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Shoot the most folks. You a great example. So shoot, I light up when I'm around you, bit, bro. Juju, I appreciate you wearing a Bengals jersey. That's the number one thing that I appreciate. You know how to make yourself a guest <laughs> in somebody else's home. You come and make them feel comfortable, man. I feel good when you got the stripes on. Hey, man, I already, I'm trying to represent, you know what I mean? I like that. be a little bit of a thorn. I love you it. Dig me. I love it. Juju, did you... <laughs> Get a chance to watch any of the Hall of Fame, NFL Hall of Fame ceremonies this weekend. I watched them in snippets, you the, feel me? I watched, I watched a couple of them here and there. couple yeah. snippets. Is there anything that st- stuck, stuck out to you? I was there. I was in Canton for the first time. I had never been to the Pro Football Hall of Fame. One of my boys, we talked about this on previous shows, one of my boys, Joe Thomas, who was a teammate of mine in Cleveland, he played 10,363 consecutive NFL snaps for a record. He is also... <laughs> Uh, the Hall of Famer now that has by far the most losses in his career of any Hall of Famer, which is <laughs> which is crazy. It's a crazy stat. We were up there kicking it. Did you watch? Was there anything that stood out to you from the weekend? Bro, let alone, he lost a lot of games, but he lost a lot of weight since he been in, in the yeah. after league. Now, my boy lost a, another him, you feel me? Straight he was like, he could be audition for uh, what they played, uh, Guardians of the Galaxy, one of them <laughs> folks at this point. Back then, he looked like a refrigerator, goddamn. It's crazy, because his abs are, I don't, I don't really have abs no more, I stopped working out. When I retired, I immediately cold turkey stopped working out. <laughs> I have not worked out since I retired. And Joe nah, did the complete nah. I uh, promise you. You did a push-up or something, bro. I did a push-up every once in a while. Every once in a while, I look uh. in the mirror and be like, damn, man, what happened? And I'll do like 17 push-ups and get tired <laughs> and then go yeah. back to eating. And you know what I'm saying? So it was it was really dope to celebrate with him, you know, because I, I was never like a player that – I don't want to say I didn't care about the Hall of Fame. I do – have a reverence for obviously anybody who's great at anything, but I never aspired to be a Hall of Fame player. That wasn't my, I wanted to play one game in the league and I thought that was far-fetched. So everything after that was like, oh, this is crazy. So it never crossed my mind that I ever even could think about getting into the Hall of Fame. And maybe that was a bad way to go about it. Maybe that was just like, you know what I'm saying? Maybe I went into it wrong, but that's just, I'm just being honest, Jew. So when that I'm might there, not be the way. That might not be the way for kids, that to might think, not, <laughs> but I can dig it. <laughs> yeah, that might not be the message I want to preach. But so when I'm there, I, I, I found myself like, yo, this is really cool. Because if you think about it, there's over 35, I think, thousand former NFL football players. And there's only Damn. 371 in the Hall of Fame, right? So to have played with somebody like Joe, who was dominant even on this team of the decade, and to be able to get recognized like that, it was it was a really dope environment, man. I got to see some old teammates, 
We all acted like it was a Super Bowl. It was crazy. The Browns, <laughs> we all acted like we won the Super Bowl. It was like our Super Bowl, our career had come to a head, and it was like, yo, we did it. We were all acting like it was us going into the Hall of Fame. Should it be tears in the Hall of Fame? Like, <sighs> I think Joe, he, uh, he a little above a couple of other folks that made it in the Hall. I don't should it know. be uh, levels to it, or should it just be the Hall? You know what? I think there is such an elitist, I mean, now I'm, I'm going to rail against the Pro Football Hall of Fame. There is an elitist <laughs> mentality when it comes to football players, even by Hall of Fame standards. So yes, Deion Sanders, he's in a class of his own as a, as a player. There's certain players that are like that. But to say like we're one of the 371 best of 35,000 and then yeah. still feel like you're not in an exclusive enough category <laughs> is, is wild, wild conceited. But that's what makes him great. That's the difference between the Deion Sanders and the Andrew Hawkins, because I don't, I wouldn't have that mentality. <laughs> I had some drama this weekend too, Ju. I had some drama. Oh, Lord. All right, going so on? this is what happened. Okay, so we go to the Hall of Fame ceremony, right? I'm there. My wife is there. My kids are there. We're having a good time celebrating Joe Thomas, and we're like, let's go check out the museum. So we're going to check out the museum. The people at the Hall of Fame were super gracious. You know, I played in Cleveland, so I get a lot of love, you know, in Canton. That's, that's Brown's country. And so everybody. Yeah, I know the waves was 360. Waves was 360. Yeah, I already seen you out in the wild before. I know how those things you know, were dis disorganized folks. You, you know what I mean? <laughs> the beard was, was perfectly trimmed and everything, so I'm there. They're doing autograph sessions. Now, I got this football, Jew. On this yeah. football, I have, well, at this time, I had eight of the top 11 NFL rushers of all time on this football signature. I got Walter Payton. I got Emmitt Smith. I got uh, Curtis Martin. I got Jerome Bettis. I got Jim Brown. I was only missing three people on this ball. Tony Dorsett, Barry uh -huh. Sanders, and Adrian Peterson. They're the only three that I'm missing from the top 11 NFL rushers of all time. And I've been, I've been grabbing signatures on this ball, I think, for 15 years. Like, as I go to events, I take it with me. So, of course... I'm at the Hall of Fame. I got the football with me. So Tony Dorsett is signing autographs, right? So I'm like, oh, okay, bet. You know, I'm going to go get the <laughs> autograph. So they got these long lines, and you got to pay for a seat. Like, you got to pay to get in line to get an autograph, right? Oh, oh, whoa, whoa. Hey, whoa time out. Pay for a spot in line to get an autograph? Yeah, that's how it works, man. Bro, the children of the future. What, is, what the hell is that? <laughs> the children are future revenue. That's what, that's what the children are. <laughs> And that's the point. That's that's the great part. That's what the Hall of Famers look forward to is because now the rates that you can charge for appearances, autographs, oh and you basically can ride that that job for the rest of your life. Like you got the gold jacket anywhere yeah. you show up. There's just a certain amount of, you know, it's a price to do business, which I'm, I'm all for. Now, I make the mistake of thinking, OK, I'm, a, I'm an NFL player. I'm here with the Hall of Fame. My, my, my best one of my best friends in the world is going in. I can skip the line. Well, I didn't try to skip the line though. All right, hear me out. I'm like, I'm like, I'm gonna use my my my, my pro football privilege here. So I know um, Andre Reed really well. That's one of the big homies. He's an underrated Hall of Famer. He's one of those guys that doesn't get the love that he deserves. And I make sure I always give him his flower. I get my Jew on when I'm around Andre <laughs> Reed because I'm like, yo, you like that big bro, right? <laughs> so I go say what's up to Andre Reed, who's signing autographs, and. You know, we chit chatting, and that's when I spot Tony. I'm like, oh, Ben, I'm going to go get the autographs. So they take me over there. Andre's like, yeah, for sure. I, come on, let's walk over. I'm like, hey, Mr. Dorsett, can you sign? The, he's all good. He's, you know, he signs it. And I had met him a couple years earlier. I grew up around where he, he played football. I'm from Pennsylvania. So I was like, yo, this is really, really dope. Nice. His people were pissed. Oh. Oh, they was pissed. I feel the eyes coming, like, from the right side. Like, like what in the hell do you think you're doing, right? And so I get the autograph, I move on, but then I'm like, I don't feel right about like, you know what I'm saying? So I go over to try to explain like, okay, <laughs> y'all, I actually bought three signatures. Like, you know, yeah. not just one, I bought three to make sure it's not like, I don't wanna, I'm not trying to take nobody's money, right? Right, right. And so I'm trying to explain <laughs> that I'm like, yo, I, I'm just, I'm, a, I'm with the Browns. I'm here with oh the Hall of Fame, God. my boy's going. They were like, we do not care. It is the way you go about it. Who the hell do you think you are? They didn't oh say hell. I shouldn't say that. But they were basically like, yo, oh. get out of my face. And there was nothing I could do to convince them oh, <laughs> that I wasn't, I wasn't doing things the, wrong, the right way. So I got my signature, Jew, but I, you know, I, don't feel, I don't feel great about it. I don't feel great either. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, my God. I don't, I don't feel great about it, man. I, I, I was trying to apologize. 
the person telling you this what, what was their statue and, and creed like uh, exactly <laughs> it was like uh i mean i'm talking about they were not happy did you watch uh demarcus ware sing the national an anthem for the uh the hall of fame game uh, that was the shock of the weekend. Really? My boy got the same singing voice as Fantasia Barino got there. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, were your thoughts? what were your give me your honest thoughts on Demarcus Ware? And for those that don't know, Demarcus Ware, who was a part of this year's Hall of Fame class, um, yeah. he sung the national anthem for the annual Hall of Fame game, which kicks off the NFL preseason every year in the weekend where all the players get enshrined. And I think it threw some people off a little bit. I'm going. I'm. I'm. I was there. I was at the game. I was on the sideline for it. <laughs> when I say it was a curveball at your boy, Jew, it, that that's putting it lightly. But I want to hear from you first. When you saw Demarcus hey. Ware showing the vocals on the national anthem, what were your honest to God thoughts? Bruh, first thought I was like, oh, my boy brave. You feel me? My boy moves. brave as hell. He got like, this is a real tough man. Like, tough. this is the epitome of confidence. This is the epitome of strength. He said, forget it. I'm finna get out here and sing. And <laughs> it was surprisingly a lot better than I could have ever imagined. Really? Like, you feel me? Like, it was better than I could ever imagine. But at the same time, <laughs> he got this whisper to his voice where he talked like kind of soft. Tone the whole time. And it was so funny to me, bro. Like I couldn't <laughs> stop uh, giving the appreciation, but at the same time having a little chuckle. Because <laughs> <laughs> my boy, <laughs> I, 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 it was it was brave to go out there. It was brave, yeah. and I, I feel like it was one of those situations. Where he's like, yo, I want to, I'm going to sing it. I'm singing the national anthem. And they were like, yo, we can't tell him no. He, you know, I, I don't know if there was like an audition. If they were like, yo, we'll sing something for me. It you know, been. now I'm not saying DeMarcus Ware can't sing. I'm not going to make, I'm not going to make that declaration on this show. I'm a DeMarcus Ware fan. I was very proud of him and what he did. But I, I, I don't think that's, I don't think that's the stage he should have debuted his singing. I think we should have been in the lab a little more. <laughs> he, you know what I'm saying? He was getting a jacket and they were like, oh, yo, we're going to give you this opportunity too. I was on the sideline and I don't know. It wasn't, I, I'm not going to lie. If I'm being honest, I laughed on the sideline. I was, <laughs> but I, I, I was fighting. It was worse because I was fighting back the laughs. And it wasn't because he was, he was terrible right like he's just <laughs> right he he there were certain moments where he didn't get out of a certain key and i think it just threw us all off <laughs> and so when you know when you're not supposed to laugh is that much funnier right bro like so, draymond <laughs> fergie <laughs> is that's what kept coming to mind which made me laugh more and oh of course i run to twitter to see if anybody else is seeing things the way that i'm seeing things or like what is what is what does the zeitgeist got to say like what is everybody <laughs> else doing in this moment the zeitgeist. you know what i'm saying but i think i think it's dope i think every year they go in the hall of fame anybody oh, who makes the hall of fame that weekend should be able to do whatever the hell they want if he wanted to suit up in that game he should have been able to suit up and play for the for the Jets or the Browns, pick his team on any amount of plays. Like it's like a do what you want this weekend, and I hope that happens and we can point to Demarcus Ware for the reason why that goes into practice. He should have kept it at Dallas. That there would have been five if he would have did that for Dallas season opener or something. Like everybody in here Ware fan got ninety four on their back. Yep. Here at the Hall of Fame, but you got folks that grew up hating you already. Yeah. And that, that, so you, you know what? Them. That's what it was. <laughs> That's what it was. It's like like when you do live podcasts, you know, it's like you're, you always going to bring the house down. Anybody who pays a ticket to watch you come podcast, they're on your side. Everything you say is going to be hilarious. When you're doing stand up comedy and people don't know you, it's hit or miss. <laughs> to your point, he should have made his debut in Dallas. Jude, there were some pretty big fights this weekend, man. I don't I don't know. What you? I, I don't know if you're a fight fan. We had official fights. We had um, Jake Paul versus Diaz. That kind of kicked it <laughs> off. But then that, that wasn't even like probably top five fights of the week. We had uh, the Alabama fight. Dinah Montgomery. Oh. Did you did you see that fight, man? Bruh, a tear came from my shit. A tear when I seen my boy uh, Block with my swimming across that sea, the shining sea, bruh. Like, <laughs> Block that shit was real, like. That was real, like, 
moving to me, bro. That, hey. I salute to everybody in Montgomery, man. We All got right, you, so man. Uh, you know where we got to set the stage here. So yeah. in Mon- Montgomery, Alabama, I'm not even sure what the card. You know what the name of the spot was? <laughs> they're on a they're on a lake. Apparently, there's a boat parked where it ain't supposed to be parked. Security car comes up and he starts like, hey, this boat got to move. I don't know if he's pushing the boat. I don't know if they're starting to like physically move the boat after the person who parked the boat there was told it couldn't park the boat there. Now, right. those people come out and they say, Yo, you're moving our boat. Like we could park wherever the hell we want. I'm just I'm paraphrasing because I couldn't hear what they were saying through the video. Although the commentary is the best part of the fight video. Yes. Wh- whoever she was, she, th- that Get person. Sit. She should the be the sag after. Oh she my god! She should be a sag after striking. Yeah, I, she needs I to say swear. That. <laughs> I don't care. Tony Romo, um, Doris. I don't care who it is. I'm, I'm taking her over any of them on a play by play. Anyway, yes. they're upset. They're being told to move their boat, and so it gets physical essentially. And this this, this group of, of guys who have this boat, they start beating on the security guard, but they didn't yeah. know that you know. I don't know if it was top flight security or what, but his, his people had his back. They had. Somebody Bruh. jumps in from uh, a cruise boat and swims probably about 100 yards. And I'm Bruh. talking about Michael Phelps' form. To Michael get there, B. Phelps. Michael, <laughs> Michael B. Phelps. To get there and Bruh. start whooping ass. So now it becomes this melee. And everybody's, I mean, it's literally uh, probably close to 100 people fighting yes. at, I think, the Riverboat, Riverboat Park in Montgomery, uh-huh. Alabama. The clips hit the net. Riverfront Park, apologies. The clips hit the net and it goes berserk viral. And I mean, I'd be remiss if I didn't say that <laughs> the security guard was black and it just seemed like a bunch of, like it was, it was bad. It was like, it's it seemed the people the who work with a lot of, what we see. A, a, a <laughs> lot of the employees came to his aid as well. Cause you could tell that they like know him and it wasn't like, oh, we're not right. going to let this just go down. Like this is what we're not going to do. And so it's this crazy fight, but the clips are Ridiculous. I've seen reenactments. I've seen sketches. I saw t shirts for sale. Yes, when you're sir. watching this, what was <laughs> give me give me give me your give me your play by play here, Juju. Bruh, speaking of t shirts, my partner got the black one man shirts right now for y'all for uh thirty dollars. crazy. You feel me? If you want them, check <laughs> out my boy them. Rico. You feel me? This this now, happened thirty six hours ago. They already, <laughs> bruh, he, he had him up last money. night too. He had him up he, last, I was like, damn, for twenty four hours. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> bro, security guard threw his hat to the sky like Bobby Schmurder, and that thing was on, bro. I'm talking about it was so funny how he threw the hat. Is my thing. Like, bro, why did you throw your hat up like that? Is that the code for like, that was oh, a signal. we got one. Hey, <laughs> like, mount up. Because as soon as it went up, they did that. Warriors oh, clicking the bottles. Mount up. They, was, they were kicking bro. people into the river. People oh were getting hit with chairs. Hopefully, was, my sis could swim. Like, luckily, she could swim. Yeah. Thank God, because that would have been a uh, murder one. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Straight. But, but <laughs> at I least salute, salute out the, the the Caucasian, uh, my Caucasian sisters that was jumping into the fight. Uh, that wasn't the best of ideas because it was alongside. A lot more, yeah. Yeah. It was a, it was a lot more sisters watching their man. I think the thing about that made I don't want to say any fight is enjoyable, right? Like, it's not like don't be out here fighting, man. We adults. Let me just yeah. preference that for my for my, all my folks that are a part of this. We don't condone violence here on Journeyman. No. Now that being said, I when I do when in the moments I do enjoy a fight, it's when the victor isn't the one that started it, and that goes across <laughs> any uh, right. socioeconomic background, culture, color. If if someone starts a fight and then loses, I don't know if there's a more satisfying watch, Amen. on planet Earth. Right, which Amen. brings me to my next fight, Drew. Did you see Jose Ramirez and Tim Anderson? You oh, might have missed this one. Damn. All right. Yes, I saw you that. You saw this yes. one. This is that, a, that I, hurt I, me. That a, hurt. It hurt you. That I didn't, hurt. I'm not gonna lie. I liked it. I liked it. Maybe it's uh. the little guy complex in me. <laughs> but you know, Anderson all puffed up on them muscles and felt like you know what? Let's. I got a disagreement, blah blah blah. Right. <laughs> and and so Jose Ramirez, he's like, hey man. You know what? Whatever the, the I don't even I don't even know baseball enough to know what the hell they were fighting about. He slid in the base. I don't know if he's not supposed to go head first, feet first. Maybe he tagged him too hard. I never know why people start fights in other sports. I know why football people start fights. I understand that. I never know like what you're not supposed to do in the other sports, baseball and basketball specifically. 
Bruh, that, oh my God, he should have been bobbing and weaving. That's what I started by saying. Like, Tim, if you're going to throw the dukes up, you got to bob and weave. You got to be the man that got to, to do it. You feel me? You got to. But at, at this, I mean, when he got, Tim, at this point, all Tim can do, he doing the opposite of what he should do right now. What's that? Right what now, he, he doing? online tweeting about. Oh, he's tweeting. He it. see all this. Yes, he been. He tweeted up up a storm yesterday. <sighs> he see all the snakes. He see this and yeah. That last, the truth gonna come out. Whatever, whatever. Nah, bro, you are doing it all wrong. You're giving us more ammo. Yeah, what you should up. be doing right now is you supposed to be like, bro. Which one of y'all hit me? Because <laughs> who hit me that night? You got to lean into it. I got me getting knocked out merch. Buy it from me. Don't buy it from the, the uh, Cleveland Guardians. They finna make money off you. Right? You got to get ahead of this. You got to get Be ahead like, of it. Be like, bro, that was not Ramirez that hit me. I looked in his eyes. I saw the ghost of Hector Camacho. That was uh, <laughs> who hit me. You got to lean into it. You can always uh, diagnose who lost a fight by who was over-explaining. That is like exactly. the first telltale sign. I got in a fight in college once, and you know, I I didn't start the fight, but I I finished it, and I'm like, okay. I, I want I want some more. I, I wasn't enough. I didn't like, I didn't get them the way I wanted to get them, and I was like, yo, every time <laughs> and I, I I said every time I see you, it's on. So don't think this is like a one and done. Every time Damn. we cross paths, it's go time. I just want you to know that. And I had somebody actually, Aaron. Aaron Donald's older brother, Archie Donald, who was a, a, a tough SOB in college, he was like, what you mean you going you going you when you see him it's, it's on again. I'm like, I'm a sh- I, he picked the wrong one. He said, "Don't do that. That's what that's what losers do." Which you if you lost, that's something you do, but you, you and I'm like, mm. so it changed my perspective. So I I did it there. But to your point about Tim Anderson him on Twitter, we probably don't see Ramirez on Twitter because there was four punches thrown in that fight. 3 of them were by Tim Anderson. If I had a scorecard, it would say zero for three. He missed all three. Ramirez threw a one-hitter quitter and dropped him. And he went to sleep for a second. I don't know if you saw the – I saw the limp yeah. arms on the way down, and mid-flight. he woke up halfway through, yeah. and it was – again, you started he the fight. He took a mid-flight nap. That shit was sad, bro. Ramirez right. threw a no-look. He threw a, a, a Pistol Pete Maravich <laughs> no-look, no-look-away jab hook and dropped him. Bruh. That he should Tim Anderson got please if you hear I know you're listening then Tim. Uh once you hear this, bro, make one of them uh like like Hawk made, do the rod man. Bruh, I got out there, I threw my glove down. Mm. And then he said, My see I seen Mike, I seen I play for the South Side 45. I don't know who I saw. You know what I mean? Yep, like yep. lean into it. That come on, Tim. We need you, bro. Come back. We we not all giving up on you. Nah. But don't just stay down. I've been down before. I've been down before. Come on, come on, Tim. So now he got to fight in the Triller series at some point in got his career because you can't you, you can't gotta have beat that, him. You can't have that. And, and sidebar, you one of the worst type of people to fight too. I hate what you said about the college. You done terrorized that man all through college, bro. Like every yeah, time I was, see you, it's on. Come on, bitch, bro. Every like, time. Don't don't hit me no more. It's like you know you know how <laughs> nerve wracking it is to have to walk around. And hope you don't see somebody and have to fight. There is right. nothing. I'm situation. fresh as hell today. Come on, bro. And you gotta walk around all day. And that's that was more what I wanted. I wanted. I wanted some. I want him to wake up every day and be on campus. Like, damn, I might have to fight again today. Like, you can't even settle in. You gotta watch what you wear. You gotta wear. You gotta wear, be 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 fight ready every single right. day. And I wear sweatsuits. I'm a football player. I was I was leaving weightlifting in sweatsuits and sneakers. I'm ready all the time. Did you see the WNBA damn. fight? The who fight? WNBA fight. Did you did you say? Oh yes. Yeah. Yes. Talk- I'm a WNBA peer. Yeah, like I I, I'm, I'm a curious. W- so I, I don't even want to be the one to talk about it. You tell me what happened in the WNBA fight and give me give me your perspective on it. Look, B Psycho. Oh, well, that's my nickname. Uh, Brittany Sykes. She was going up to the lane. You feel me? Uh, uh-huh. She was uh, the guard and Clarendon. Uh, from 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 the LA Sparks, you feel me? Washington Mystics, you did. Salute to them sisters. They be on a little slide. Get it together, sister. Y'all falling down. Keep it together. Sparks on the rise as well. But late in the game, a bit. It was a bit. Of, it was a lot to do about nothing for real. Because I think there's once you like you can't just run up on B sites like that. It's the thing. B site trying to go at every second. You can't fake push her. You can't do none of that. None of that. And she did that to B sites and got mushed down a little bit to the ground. You feel me? Help, help me get up. And that was all. You feel me? Just, just increase the peace, though, B sites. Increase the peace. I think it's good for the game. 
Yeah. I think I think all fights in professional sports are good for the game. Like when people make a big deal about training camp fights in, in football, I'm like, the coaches love that. They love it. <laughs> Because they, they, they want this version of competition. And the fans love it, too. As much as yeah. they won't admit it, they love it. Like and, and I feel like the WNBA starting to fight like the competitors they are. Like, I'm, yeah. I'm all for it. It was like when we saw uh, Caitlin Clark um, and, and, and Reese from LSU. Like, all the conversation around them that wasn't basketball. And it was like, oh, right. you know, people were like, this isn't good. I'm like, this is great for the game because this is what – the sports that people are super, super invested in, this is what we talk about. How how rare is it that we actually talk about the X's and O's of basketball? No, we talk about everything right. outside the W or the NBA, the NFL. And I think it's really cool that, again, we're at this stage. It's like, yeah, baby, we got some fights yeah. brewing up. That's what I like to right. see. They Take a care. Swing. That's the thing. They out there caring like hell. They out the Sparks trying to get in the playoffs. It's Missy trying to fight off the dream. Like, like they care. And so it does make you want to go to somewhere yes. that, oh, damn, they care this much. Let me see. Let me check them out. You yes. Know what I mean? Yes. Man, trust me, you will not be disappointed. Hey, man, uh, salute to sis, too. I know uh, sis, you know what I mean? Happy birthday, sis. Sydney. You feel me? Happy belated birthday. Yeah. It was, it was a rough. It was rough in New York the other day. I know that part. It was rough <laughs> in New York. So I I know they're going to get some get back on what, the 14th, I yep, think, yep, they play yep. again. Popcorn ready, man. Welcome back to Journeyman, Jew. We were talking about fighting, which it, it, we talked a little bit about this on previous episodes, but I want to hear your perspective. If you had to fight a fan base of any man. team, what would be the top fan base that you wouldn't want to put on that list <laughs> the dreams and nightmares the philadelphia eagles <laughs> the philadelphia phillies and the philadelphia 76ers i don't want no smoke with none of y'all fans <laughs> salute the uh, freeway beanie siegel All everybody them. over there man. why, then, why <laughs> the philadelphia probably. eagles and sixers and and flyers why wouldn't you want to fight philly fans Bro, their their chant is no one likes us, no one likes us, no one likes us, we don't care. We are <laughs> Philly bleeping Philly, no one likes us, we don't care. Anybody who making up songs like that, yeah. I don't really want too much smoke with myself, yeah. you feel me? They're okay you got, with the smoke. That sound like a razor blade and all that, I don't got time for you. They're, 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 their fan base, it, it, it spans across way too many walks of life out there in Philly. Like... <laughs> They got, they got, they got, they got tough, tough people from every culture there. And they, and them coming together, I completely agree. That's, that was my vote as well. That was a fan base I don't want to see first. I hope I fight them last. <laughs> uh, but that's good to get your perspective because I feel like you would know best. Now let's transition to the NFL talking about the Eagles a little bit. Um, you know, I, there's all these lists that come out at this time of year of like who's who's the best quarterback, who's the quarterback to watch out for. And it's funny because over the last couple of years, I've been pounding on this table of saying like, yo, this isn't a debate. And it seems like we're already getting bored with a certain player who is by far and away not just better than people in the league. I think he's the best quarterback of all time already. And that's Man. Patrick Mahomes. He's out here throwing behind-the-back passes, and he's talked uh, recently or in years past about him wanting to do a behind-the-back pass in a game. And he, he's, he has some more clips to add to the repertoire of him throwing behind-the-back passes. But, and the crazy thing is, like, you know, looking in the rundown they put together, like, oh, what's your take on this? Do you, you know, is, is it cocky to throw a pass behind the back? And it absolutely is, but I, I, I want to make sure people understand and know how much better than everybody else Patrick Mahomes is. <laughs> Like, I, I mean, you talk about talent. I'm, I'm not just talking about the people within the league, and there's a lot of great players. And my favorite quarterbacks in the league are Joe Burrow and Lamar Jackson. They're my favorites. But nice. if I'm being objective and I'm being honest, Jew, Patrick Mahomes is him. And I'm talking about you You put him in a room with Aaron Rodgers and Tom Brady, and it's still, it's still Patrick Mahomes. That's how talented yeah. this dude is. I second that, bro, and it pains me to second it, but I second it because I'm not a Chiefs fan. I'm not – I don't like none of that. 
they got going on over there. But <laughs> none of the championships. I, you got to give it up. Just like I wasn't a Kobe fan when he was alive. I, mm. I like Steve Nash and Paul Pierce and all of them. Mm, but you like mediocrity. Respect is you got to give it up, bro. The respect. Mamba mentality, <laughs> crazy. Man. Behind the back passes for you even be for that even be a sentence that we're saying here on the Journeyman Podcast. That's that's crazy. Like behind the back NFL pass. Come on, bro. Take it he, from you. Got Aaron Donald, like you said, big Aaron Donald right there. Them type of monsters right here chasing you, and you toying with the idea of a behind the back, sir. You're the goat. Just, just, just watch out, bro. He's the out. goat, and Aaron Donald is like in that category too on the defensive side. So I'm glad you brought him up. Carl just asked me in my ear, like, what's the point? And the point is, you ever see a really smart kid who is like the most misbehaved kid in class? And yeah. what do they say every yeah. time? <laughs> He, he needs to be challenged, right? It's too easy for him. This is so easy. I got to entertain myself doing everything else. That right. is what Patrick Mahomes is in the territory of. The NFL, right. Think about it. In his five years of starting, he's been to the AFC Championship five times. He's been to the Super Bowl three times, and he's won two of them. He is a Hall of Famer starting five years in the NFL. He is a Hall of, oh and not just a God. Hall of Famer. He's one of the best quarterbacks in the history of the game within five years. So, yes, this is probably right. getting easy to him. And, and it's funny because when, when his early parts of his career, whenever he would need a score or but they would go down the field, everybody would know there is nothing you can do to stop it because wow. he is that Dang. good. And it's, it's, and it's not because, like, you know, Tom Brady. I love Tom Brady's story because it's the underdog mentality, right? Like, I'm going to show it to you. I'm going to prove it to you that you were wrong about me, and he carries that chip with him everywhere. There is no chip for Patrick Mahomes, which makes it that much scarier because it's just like, yo, I was put on this earth to play NFL quarterback, and it just, it's natural. He was on the shop one time, and he was saying how he's still <laughs> learning how to read defenses. You have to be so good. And again, to bring it back to Joe Thomas, former teammate who played in the Hall of Fame, we were having a conversation one time about injuries, right? Because you, you play 10,363 consecutive snaps in the NFL. It's, it's nuts because it's like, yeah. how do you play that long, that physical of a position and never get hurt? And he was right. explaining it and he was being so honest and he was like, oh, well, you know, it's not that hard. It's just that like, I, I just knew when I was blocking, I would just always know where I was on the field and I would always like to kind of check over my shoulder as I'm blocking to make sure that my, my legs don't get run up on or I would. And I'm like, you know how good you have to be to not be thinking about stopping, uh, <laughs> you know, whoever the, the, the number one pass rusher is, DeMarcus Wares, right? Right, you, that's right. a That's a feat in and of itself to try to stop you from getting by me. You're a Hall of Famer and he played so right. many Hall of Famers. But you're so good that you can not only block at the same time, you're also looking at the pile behind you to make sure your ankles don't get run up on. Like, that's a whole different level of talent. And so for Patrick Mahomes, it's like, yeah, I'm, yeah I'll make the regular throws. Those are, I do those in my sleep. <laughs> let, me try to, right. let me try to incorporate some basketball into the NFL. That's crazy. Bro, they, some of them folks, the NFL teams, they playing chess. Patrick Mahomes playing Call of Duty, sniping. <laughs> like, he ain't even doing this same thing I up to. Right, exactly. Um, well, Carson Wentz might be playing rock, paper, scissors. Because oh. my man is out here, you know what I'm saying? He's, he's on social media. I don't know if it's a campaign. And I've been here, man. I've been on. The, I've been a street free agent before. And you gotta, you want to try to show like, hey, I'm, st I'm still out here. Hey, hey, yeah. look at, hey, now, a lot going on now. I, I want some of these calls. And my man had a, a Eagles helmet on, a, 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 a Commanders jersey, and Colts pants, looking like a, a, a Photoshop. <laughs> Showing it, it, Carson Wentz, where where are we at with him? How, what is what is Man. your perspective on Carson Wentz and his career? Capital G, capital O, capital O, capital F, capital Y is goofy. goofy. Oh, he's a goofy. Come on, brother. I, I salute to Carson Wentz. We are so proud of you. He, he led Philadelphia that one year to the Super Bowl. Yeah. Had a rough injury, and Nick Foles came in yeah. and shined. Took all the shine. Got a took statue outside the building. Ain't that a Nick Foles got a statue outside the Eagles Stadium. The uh, the what's the call? The, the, the pass, the Saturday oh. special, whatever it's called. The yeah, Philly special. Philly sell. Oh, that hurts. That is a hurt piece, boy. <laughs> right. So I know it's the mental. I, mental health is very important. Mm, so I know mm, that mm. definitely can't feel great. 
But you can't come out there with the immaculate grid of yourself, like coming like, bro. You gotta just pick. A, I, I wouldn't want no teams. Who you play for now, bro? Like I would have came out of Nike Tech fleece me. Yep. I would have been so fresh. I wouldn't even th thinking about who I used to play for. That's your problem. Yeah. We looking at the picture saying failure there. Yep, that was uh the the Sam Heineke years. Oh yep, that coach didn't work. Don't put that on, bro. Mm. Go ahead and put on some uh, some snake skin or something, bro. Bit, bit, bro. That is that is that is a good perspective. It, it definitely was giving me backup energy, like backup <laughs> quarterback energy, because a, 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 a competing NFL starter that you like, I'm a dog. You're pissed off about not being at those spots. Like y'all got right. me, y'all got me messed up. Right. That y'all think I'm that I'm I'm washed or I can't do it. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, yeah I, I'm with you. I wouldn't be wearing. All of those. I would have worn those at the end of my career when I didn't care. When I was like, "Yep, yeah, hey, I'm good. I'm yeah. I'm ready to back it up. I'm ready just to get paid to do nothing." Y'all hit me up, and maybe that's what he's saying. He's like, "Hey, man, maybe maybe nah. his starter dreams are over." Nah, you supposed to wear that to throwing the ball around show little kids to show that you did play in the league for real. My little kid ain't lying now. I did play quarterback. I Look, did. That's <laughs> that's one of them outfits. I be doing that. Never wear that game, man. Else. I be wearing, I, I have to wear my NFL gear to show people like, yeah, look, there's team issue now. I was there. You feel me? Hey, you there. feel me? I know Come what on, I'm talking man. about, coach. That, hey, you say Hawkins on the back right That angle ain't right. That's what I'm just telling you. But what do you I feel know? Me? I just, I just ran it against Troy Palomalu. I don't, I mean, I just, <laughs> don't, don't mind me, coach. You, <laughs> oops, oops. Sorry. You got it. You got it. No disrespect. Uh, Chris Henry Jr., because you're wearing a Bengals jersey. Chris Henry Jr., who is the son of the late, great Chris Henry. He committed to play at Ohio State, and it's ah oh, man, I, I feel so old because <laughs> I'm like, oh, it's wild to see all the players that you know and you cheer for, you played with, and now their their kids are playing elite level football and basketball. And you know, and the dopest part of that story is that Chris Henry Jr. is being raised by Pac Man, nice. who was Chris J Henry's teammate, and he kind of took him under his wing, so he's been like. You know, taking care of him and his brother and mentoring him. And I, the report that I'm getting is that Chris Henry Jr. is like that. Like, nah. you're looking at a future first round pick type. It's five star nah. recruit. He's 6'5, six, 6'6. Six, six. They said he, he, he cuts like he's like Deuce Vaughn, who was 5'5. Five, five, and they said, <sighs> said he can catch a BB in the dark, Jew. So I don't know, man. Nah. Like that. <laughs> who's the best, best legacy athlete that, that you see coming? Like, who's, who's kid? Are you most excited Ooh. about watching coming to their own or who has come into their own, right? Like Gary Payton Jr., yeah. I think, you know, he's not right. GP level, but I think it's always dope, especially when they share the same name. But who are you looking forward to from a legacy perspective? I want to see the little, the, the younger James. I feel like he the one, like, like Melo Ball, Lonzo Ball, Jello Ball. I feel like the little one, I, I'm excited to see his career because he, he be in the overtime elites and all the high school career. He, he getting there. He, <laughs> yeah. He looked like, you know, it's the youngest, the youngest siblings or the youngest athletes, I should say. They, they be, as you go down the line, they lose their, you know, their, their, their give a F meter. Like it gets lower yeah. and lower as they go down. <laughs> and for whatever reason, like Brycey, he probably not the athlete that Bronny is. Like when you see a move, jump, quickness, speed, or at least not yet, right? He's still growing. And he's right. honestly getting taller too. But he does have a little dog in him that you like, yo, he... <laughs> he he know he belong and like he don't he don't second guess himself. He be in the games like yo I'm 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 the one. So I I like that pick, man. I like that with pick. With the goggles too. With the yeah, goggles, I mean. with the rec specs. You got to be a dog <laughs> to pull up with the rec specs cuz he can he can get LASIK tomorrow if he wanted to. He wants you to know I got the rec specs on and I'm about to give you buckets. That's a fact, bro. My son wear rec specs, and I'm like, yo, you got to be a dog. You got to be a dog to pull up and give somebody buckets with rec specs, bro. That's, he about to change the game with that one. All right, we're going to talk some more football and do spot when we come back. Juju, it's, it's my opinion that there is the biggest sport, well, one of the biggest sports that nobody talks about is actually – Sports media. Like, I feel mm. like in this day and age, like, this needs its own coverage. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, in this world where athletes all start podcasts and, you know, people change networks and there's there's beef, there's Twitter beefs, there are all these things. Like, I feel like it's, like, one of the most untalked about, like, competition um, yeah. aspects of professional sports, which got me thinking about 
player podcast. Like, there's a lot of players. Like, you know, when I started my first podcast, well, actually, when I started the Tomahawk Show, which was my first podcast after retiring with Joe Thomas, okay. who was still an active player, that was that was early in the game. There you wasn't any me? any NFL, like, players with shows, and we burst onto the scene, like, kind of crazy. What's crazier right. is my first podcast, I started with my brother in 2009, called mm. The Two Deep Zone. And it was like, yo, this is going to be the future of media. And we were doing this podcast every week. And then when I started to get looks at the NFL, I'm like, yo, I'm on here talking kind of crazy. Let me <laughs> let me slow this down as I'm like talking on NFL head coaches. I'm, I'm trying to get a job at the same time. So that's why that went to funk. But in this day and age, this is like, these are the new first takes. You know what I'm saying? These are the new sports center. These are the new places. These are the, not only the sources of the conversations we have on our shows, they're also the source of news and information directly from, from players' mouths. So right. there's podcast podcast P, which is Paul George's show. I'm trying to think. There's All the Smoke, which is Matt Barnes and Steven Jackson. There's the I Am Athlete guys with B, B. Marsh in them. And then there's The Pivot, which is like – uh, a spinoff of the I. There, it, we're so right. developed into this Jew that the athlete podcast now have spinoff shows. There's the right. pivot, right? Which is Ryan Clark and the boys, and they're killing it and crushing it. We got busting with the boys. Are there any of them specifically that is that is your favorite, or that ones that you're like, oh, I, I always got to check in on this one. First off, busting with the boys is crazy, crazy, but. Uh, Podcast P, salute to Podcast P because he done had a big glow up turnaround. Like he, did, he was man. known for being pandemic P <laughs> slash playoff P, collapsing under the big moments. Fast forward three years, he got the draft picks, top ten draft picks, calling him the goat. That's crazy. He Multiple. got his own podcast where other athletes feel comfortable to come share his space and spill the beans. Pop yep. like they. I salute the podcast, P. I, I, everything you got going on, we salute you, brother. You give him the rookie My of the favorite. year? You give him the podcast, player podcast rookie Dang. of the year. There's Club 508, which is Jeff Teague, which is, you know what? Jeff Teague oh, should be on Jeff the, the Teague. He need to come Dang. on the, the Journeyman podcast because he, right. he, he fits the description. We got to get him on here. But that's a good one. Uh, Patrick yeah. Pat Beverly got his yeah. podcast. Uh, and then there's it's the so Kelsey's. out there. The Kelsey's, they're still rookies technically, I think. Right, they just right. started recently. So who would they, you give your They numbers is through the roof, though. They, Crazy they don't numbers. count because y'all can't play in a Super Bowl and then, like, that's, that's too, just. That's too easy to kick off a podcast. Right. That's that not was fair. Too, and every episode was entertaining. Salute the New Heights. Yeah. We see y'all Shout for out sure. to New Heights. Uh, but, yeah, I think, ooh, Pat, uh, Pat Bev and Pandemic P, I mean, uh, whatever they call it, Podcast P, I think they uh about neck and neck on the uh Rookie of the Year pods for the uh, podcast of the awards. Okay, so you're going to go co-rookies <laughs> of the year. Is, Dray is the Draymond Green podcast a rookie show, Carl? No? Carl says no. Not a rookie. Nah, he, don't, he ain't getting it. He said he can do it in two years can't, plus. Can't be a rookie. We don't promote violence here, like he said. You can't be punching your teammates and, uh, and get the podcast <laughs> of the year. Nah, you can't. You disqualify. Don't do that, man. You got to keep it on the field. <laughs> Everything off, we can't, we can't take that into account. Old man in the three. Um, JJ oh, Reddick yeah. been in the podcast game for a long time. He's kind of probably... He probably he would he probably the pioneer of the athlete podcast. I'm trying to think who before him like was really really in it. Carl mm. Carl might know this. Uh, let's see. Before JJ JJ Reddick got ESPN road tripping. And all this stuff but too. I think Reddick might have been before road tripping because I was there for road tripping and road tripping was dope. They were also pioneers of like the way that they did it. But I think yeah. JJ might have even been in the podcast game before that. Dang. We got to do, we gotta do some research going. Man three, bro. It's they, the old uh, man. Jason Gallagher, I see. He one of the producers over there. I have, a, I have a little theory that I'm, I, I feel like when it comes to scouting podcasts, I feel like I might be one of the best, man. Yeah. I, I, I feel like it. I had Bustin' with the Boys. I was, trying to get, I was trying to get them signed. I'm like the old record <laughs> execs that go on um, Noriega's show. Yeah. And, I, and I, they talk about like how yo, I was trying to get Kanye signed. That was me yeah. with podcast. I was trying to get Bustin' with the Boys signed. I was trying to get all the smoke signed. 
And you they, feel me? They was there. Salute, they hey, salute to be it, bro. One second. You know salute what I'm saying? Bro, Steven Jackson. My, that's my big all dog. The smoke, you know all I mean? the smoke. We had all the smoke uh, first. I'm like, yo, we got to go. Smoke. Matt Barnes. We had a, I had another podcast that I named All the Smoke, but I also helped develop um, and name another show Matt Barnes was doing in his first episode was with Marshawn Lynch. And yeah. that ended up turning to and spinning into All the Smoke. Look, bro. The, we gotta give my boys flowers right now. You feel me? The how you know? I'm gonna give you the flowers. You give me my, me? give me my podcast. That's, that's some flowers, heavy hitters man. you just named. You didn't just name this some, is this is the top, you, right? You ain't just named the mystery crate or some old other. You named some some the top of the pops right now when it comes to the podcast game. Easy. I'm talking about Showtime big deals, big <laughs> Look, deals. Bro, that, that's crazy, millions of bro. dollars of revenue right there. If somebody, if I'd just had my own label, I right. could. have I could have been Diddy out of the podcast game. Jeff, put Ether under this part of the uh, Drop the bomb. Give me a, uh, a, a flex <laughs> bomb right now. So sticking right. with the media stuff, Juju. All right, so now we got some shuffling going on in the, in, in, in the take atmosphere of sports media. So Shannon Sharp leaves. Stephen A comes out and says he wants Shannon Sharp. How do you feel about that? And, and typically, if I feel like if Stephen A says it, that means it's in the works. So how do you right. feel about a Stephen A and Shannon Sharp first take uh, tandem taking <laughs> over ESPN. Are you for it? Are you against it? Is this like when you put two of like the same side battery together and they, 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 re, they repel each other? You know what I'm saying? Because they both were opposite Skip Bayless, which is he just, he, just, he just made a nice little chess move himself that we right. got to talk about. But how do you feel about a Stephen A and Shannon Sharp uh, first take show? Bro, I love it. I feel like salute to Unk. Like, Unk got away from that, that uh, my guy, Skip, and him and Stephen A, they, I think they understand how much money f to be made during this, this time of the, uh, uh, what, 2023. Like, they ain't, they paying big bucks for them to get it together. Big so, bucks. I think they're going to be very professional. Mm -hmm. I think they're going to keep it together. Uh, the, the people on set, though, y'all had to wear some, uh, some ear pods or some <laughs> earbuds to keep the noise down because it's going to be loud, especially whenever they play the Cowboys and Big Michael Irvin scroll in. Oh, it's going to be the loudest day on Seaport history. <laughs> but the numbers are gonna probably going to go through the roof. Because the formula for this for the last decade plus is white guy, black guy. Right, you yeah. take opposing sides, and a lot of if we're being honest, that's a lot of sports, right? That's why Talk the Caitlin it. Clark and and the Reese thing was like people were picking sides. That's why the Alabama fight thing goes viral. Like Talk you know, if it. I'm being honest, we are who we are, all of us. And it's like, okay, you want to see these fights and you want to see these disagreements and these debates, and that has been the formula. This will be kind of the next step. Very similar to the like quarterbacks where it was like, oh, man, there can't be black quarterbacks. Well, now nobody bats an eye at black quarterbacks. They had to rush to get those documentaries out because people stopped caring. You're like, what are you talking about? Like, that don't even make sense no more, buddy. <laughs> you see my homes I could throw them behind the back passes? Well, now right. in sports media, you're going to have a debate show where it's like, oh, it's, it's weird. Even the way I described it coming in as two same sides of the battery. <laughs> These people aren't the same. It's just that they both the black guys opposite Skip Bayless. And yeah. if this works, or even the fact that they're doing it, it's kind of taking the next step of being like, okay, more dismantling of the same structures that we've seen for so long. Right, right. They, I think they're going to come in and clean up um, their, because they're perceived a certain way also right now mm -hmm. as the, the loud or boisterous or whatever. But I think they're going to come in and do a fantastic job. Football season around the corner. I can't wait to tune in, man. And just when I thought Skip Bayless had no more tricks up his sleeve, <laughs> that boy reaching his bag, and I'm like, oh, it's over for Skip. He old. <laughs> you know, he had the DeMar Hamlin situation. It's like, oh, he ain't going to make it out. Oh, my They go God. and sign Richard Sherman to debate Sherman, alongside Sherman, of him. Sherman. And I'm like, damn it, Skip is the GOAT. <laughs> I did not see... <laughs> That curveball coming. And we all remember the viral clip where Richard Sherman was a rookie. He was an all-pro. And he told Skip in front of his face. And we all loved it. It was like viral before. There was like really, really viral media clips. Is that in my 23 years of life, I'm better at life than you. Was a mic drop. <laughs> and it was like, oh, these people are going to hate each other forever. Fast forward 15 years. Skip got him one. The boy is he back, Juju. 
hey, it's, it's sermon, sermon, sermon. He went lying. <laughs> Look what he's doing now. Hey, <laughs> salute. Oh, man. Salute to them boys. They got it. So we'll see what the, the first take morning show sports wars make of this year. Who wins? Stephen A. Sh- or Shannon or Richard Sherman and Skip. But the winner always here is the Journeyman Podcast, brought to you by the good folks at the DraftKings Network and Metal Lark Media. Shout out to my guy, Juju Gotti of the Dan Lebatar Show and one mixtape aficionado and WNBA purist. My boy, I appreciate you so much for joining me today on the, po- on the Journeyman Podcast. Thank you for having me, big bro. Always, always an honor. And that does it for this week's Journeyman Podcast. Make sure you journey back next week. Same time, same place. Shout out to my boy, Juju Gotti of the Dan Levitard Show. And until next time, knuck if you buck. 